We're going to look at the structure of a neuron as well as neuron physiology. So here is a multipolar neuron, and the reason why it is a multi multipolar neuron is because it has um, multiple dendrites and one axon down here. And I don't know why, but I always like to make my multipolar neurons look like Woodstock from Snoopy. This location up here is called the cell body. This is the metabolic center of the cell. It's where that black dot is not an eyeball. It's actually a nucleus exists, as well as um, there are quite a few of the rough endoplasmic reticulums up in this metabolic center. But in the neuron, we call them the nissle body or nissle substance. There's always going to be one axon or one process that is ascending process. There are multiple dendrites up here which are receiving processes, but this axon is the only um, process that's going to be sending information out from that metabolic center, and every neuron can only have one axon. Axons are going to branch into axon terminals. And again, up here at the top, we have dendrites. Dendrites are receiving processes. And as I said before, this is a multipolar neuron, which means it has multiple processes. It can only have one axon, but it has more than one dendrite. I just drew another multipolar neuron down here. And there's actually a space in between these neurons, and that space is called the synapse or synaptic cleft. Neurons do not touch other cells. They come in really close proximity, but there's always going to be this space maintained in between them, and that is called the synapse or the synaptic cleft. This cell right here would be called the presynaptic cell, and this cell over here would be called the postsynaptic cell. Now, in this case, the postsynaptic cell is a, another multipolar neuron, but it could be a skeletal muscle cell. In that instance, this area right here would be called the neuromuscular junction, and we learned about that in Chapter 6. So I'm drawing some little structures here on the axon, and they are called Schwann cells. Schwann cells are glial cells, or a support cell um, in, the, in the peripheral nervous system that produce myelin. Myelin is a special fatty coating that protects and cushions and supports the axon, which is very, very delicate. Um, but what also happens is that this area of myelin that's produced by the Schwann cell, an action potential cannot, or an electrical signal cannot go through this area. So when an action potential is fired down an axon, it actually has to jump to these areas where you see there is no myelin, okay? And those areas are called the node of Ranvier. And so what happens is that the action potential goes from node of Ranvier to node of Ranvier to node of Ranvier all the way down to the axon terminal, and it increases the rate at which um, a nerve impulse can travel down the, um, the axon. Oops, I'm erasing the wrong thing here. There we go. So we have, um, or that's, so that's basically the structure of a neuron. So now I want to look at the neuron physiology. So at normal resting state, a neuron has a negative charge on the inside of the plasma membrane, or the neural lemma, and a positive charge on the outside. But when one of these dendrites here, okay, picks up a signal, what's going to happen is that a local depolarization is going to happen. So if this is polarized, depolarization would mean that we go from negative on the inside to positive on the inside and positive on the outside. And how is this achieved? By sodium. Sodium is going to rush into the cell. Sodium rushes into the cell and causes, again, only a localized depolarization. Okay, let me back it up for a second here. You know what just happened? Oops. Oops. I'm still learning how to use this program, guys, so bear with me. Okay. 
take these things away, all this pink. I know, just like you're in class with me, right? Okay, sorry. So, 